Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Modeling with Art of Lisa. This is part three of my Telemark style Fjord horse that I'm doing in two colors, aqua and warm white. And today what I'm going to do is actually finish up by looking at the backside, the chest, and my little face here, and then we'll look at the mane and the tail as well. So what I have set up is actually some boards here because as you can see I've already started to paint these so I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you what I've done with this. And when I paint these horses um, I will say the chest and uh, the back and such they'll all look a little different. Alright as you can see I have some boards set up. These are going to be for the color charts that are going to be available with the um, pattern packet for this. So what I did is I've actually set up on here uh, to show you guys and let me put it maybe at a better angle here. Alright maybe that will work and uh, still a little reflection here I'll play around with that. Alright so this is what I what I'm going to do is set up to do the chest and the back and the mane and the tail and show you on here uh, as well as on the horse itself. All right, so if you remember last time, I actually had set up, because I just had the two colors, I showed you how to use a paper plate. Um, one thing I didn't mention is really, let me back up a little bit, if you have a Rubbermaid, Tupperware, whatever container, you can literally just put it in here and seal it. This will hold it for you, all right? You might have to freshen up a little bit with a spray bottle with water which I have here, literally just spray it on, and uh, you can kind of continue from there. So I put it in there, and those who have been with me know that I typically use a wet palette, and that wet palette right now is occupied by a bunch of different paint uh, because I am working on, uh, here's my wet palette, and it is a hot mess right now because I am working on about four different uh, pieces at the same time here, commissions. Um, so they're coming along anyway all right so let's look here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw in my pattern my basic pattern that I have come up with and I just have a nice little chalk pencil here um, it's not really the chalk pencil I wanted though and you know ah uh, there it is I want this little guy here now I'm trying to see uh, is it Ticonderoga, no, Geoconda white chalk, Geoconda white chalk. All right, so I'm going to use my, uh, let's see, let's set us up here. All right, okay, so I'm going to use my white chalk and kind of come in with my pattern here. And I am looking at my horse here, so my horse will kind of give me assistance. So, so just to start with, this is the pattern I'm going to go off of. All right, so I have a little circle there, and it looks like I have a C with an S, with an S. Can you see me as I'm drawing this? Kind of let me bring you back down to maybe a better angle so you can see. Yeah, I think that works. So on the opposite side, I have a C, I have an S, and I kind of bring it in this way, right? And then I have a little C there, a little C here. All right, so that's ready to go. Now, if you notice, I actually have it done twice. And the reason I have this done twice is because when I do my patterns, I like to be able to do the base portion of it, and then I like to re be able to paint it again with the um, detail portion on it, on it. I think it's nice to be able to look at the two. Um, so for instance, here, I actually have them in three steps here. All right, so now let's flip it over because what I have on the opposing end is I have a C, a C. Now, I have been doing this for a long time, so this may not be perfect as I sketch it, but it's usually pretty close. 
you know, when I put out the pattern packets, you will actually have a line drawing to kind of help you with this. And then we have strokes coming out of there, and a little stroke there, and a little stroke there. And then these will be teardrops that come off the top here. All right, so we'll do that again here. Let's see, I probably should do this portion first. Come around this side. Now the nice thing with this chalk pencil is as I paint it in, it will absorb the chalk and afterwards I can wipe away any of the chalk that's there. All right. All right, so I have that one. So, and then I have the back portion here. So the back is a very simple pattern here. Sometimes I like my back styles what I paint back there more than other times. This one's, yeah, well, it's okay. We'll see if we can make it better with detail. Okay. You know, and sometimes you just have to say, eh. Well, I tried. It's not perfect, but we'll go with it. Okay. And we have a little line up top here. All right. I'll come back and finish drawing the other one afterwards because I don't want to wipe it away here. All right, so I am going to use my number four round brush. That is a premium four original gold King Art 9000. I'm going to go into my blue, my aqua, I'm rolling in. Now my brush is a little wet because I just cleaned it. I could use a little medium to help pull it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my back here, or my chest of the horse here. And the first step I'm going to do is I put my first layer and I think my horse, whoa, sorry about that. Hopefully you didn't get seasick. All right, so I'm gonna put my C stroke here, and I like to pull from thick down to thin, down to my sepal. And I'm going to mirror it on the other side. I'm going to push down thick, pull it around, and pull it in. All right, let's do this next portion. It's the inside C. The inner one just follows along with the outer one. Let's do on the opposite side here. And we'll pull it in. That looks nice. Okay. And since I'm here, I'm going to do my secondary one as well. Okay. I'm going to pull around. So notice I start from thick and I pull to thin. Thick and pull down to thin. Reapply paint on your brush as you go. I'm going to go push my brush down and then start pulling in and take that pressure off. Remember, I've talked about the airplane taking off. I will take the pressure off so the th bristles get thinner as I go. Do the same with our inner one here. Pull thin and right in. Now in the center here, I have some little teardrops here. So they really start here. I push my brush down to spread the bristles out, and then I take the pressure off to make my bristles thinner, and I bring it to the sepal. Do it again, repeat. Push down and pull in, push down and pull in. Now, I could also use a number three uh, round brush, same idea as the number four, just a little thinner. Again, I've spent so much time working with these brushes, I can typically get what I want out of them, even if they're large. All right, so, and then I can do the same up here with the top one. We'll start up here. I'm gonna start thick and pull down thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, here, thick, thin, thick, Thin. I think I had one other little one on the side there. Now, I put an undercoat because with working with acrylics, you know, this is my undercoat, acrylics dry darker 
than when you first apply them. So often you have to layer your acrylics so that you eventually get the finished color that you want. Okay, so that's done. Let's turn it. Oh, no, I have a little bit more to do. I have this. And I think on my horse, I actually came up a little higher. So I'm going to come up a little higher and pull this nice little C stroke that kind of hugs around the larger C stroke. Let me do on the other side. I'm going to push down and pull it around. Let's do on the other side here down pull around push down pull around all right so I'm finally at the point um, for those who have been following me they know I have done a few classes online with zoom and I am actually going to start posting them oh um, either later today or tomorrow this so this is uh, October 13th and I will post them on my Art of Lisa, A-R-T-O-F-L-I-S-E, on Facebook. And we'll kind of go from there. I'm going to do a combination of introduction classes, um, basic stroke work classes, uh, projects. I do have a Holling doll ornament that I did a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I'm going to have a few of those. Um, hopefully I'll have some round ornaments. I'm going to try to stick to smaller projects going into the holiday season. And then once uh, 2021 rolls around, then I'll start introducing some bigger project classes to do. All right, so you can see I'm still working with my C and S strokes. C and S strokes. All right, let's bring this around. Uh, you know, another class I've taught, uh, kind of contemplated is like a um, like a Wednesday night pop-in class uh, one of the things we found during this time of craziness is that uh, um, the sense of community we, we miss having that sense of community meeting with people so I kind of would like to see if I can start something like that uh, with a online just gathering a class pick a topic we'll work on it kind of grow from there so coming up with ideas all right I'm just going to draw this guy in here all right so I'm going to move on to this so that this one dries and then I'm going to come back to it okay I'm going to just pull these in again I've spent a lot of time sketching uh, so that's why these brush strokes come so easily or or pencil strokes per se all right so Again, I'm going to go into my aqua, load my brush, and I'm going to start with the center C and S stroke on the back here. I'm going to just pull it towards me, push the brush down, slow it down, pull it back up. Start thin on your S, push your bristles down nice and thick, pull it up, pull it thin. And then finish that guy off right there. Okay, uh, since I did that side, let me do this side. Here we go. So push down, slow your bristles down and let it pull up. Push your bristles down, pull up. Push your bristles down, pull up. Okay, now I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna pull these strokes towards me here. I'm going to start it here. Now I'm going to push my bristles out to spread them out, pull them towards the sepal, and take the pressure off. Push your bristles down, let it spread up, take the pressure up. Now these got a little scraggly, and that's because I didn't, didn't like the way I load my brush. So try to remind myself and anybody, I like to roll my brush through so the bristles all kind of combine together. So let's see if that helps on this one. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to push my bristles down, pull up. Okay, that's better. Down, pull up. And I'm going to come around the other side here. I'm going to push those bristles down and pull it up. And I'm okay with this negative space there, this opening here. Let's pull down and up. All right, let's continue this here. 
pull down and up, push down and pull it up. The nice thing about doing this on these boards, and th this is really simple, uh, this is just a cereal box board, and I base coat it in the color that I'm using, uh, which is Joe Sonia by Chroma Galaxy Blue. All right, let's see here. So now I've got these guys here. So these are a, just a C stroke, pull down. And looking back at my horse, I have a secondary C stroke right there. So pull it down. Now, if you notice, I'm sticking mostly to the aqua. Actually, I'm totally sticking to the aqua right now. And I'm doing that because that, is, again, is my undercoat. And when I come back to do my secondary coats, that's where I'll start popping in the warm white on this. Sometimes it's fun to do these kind of monochromatic styles. Okay, just nice C strokes. Pull it down. And then I just have a little there and a little there. All right, that's looking pretty good there, I think. What do you think? Not bad, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna come back to these guys up here. And I'm just going to show with putting the extra color on it, the extra white. So I'm going back, I'm going to load my brush into the aqua. I'm gonna tip into my white now I do have white um, detail paint ready and sometimes you might want to use that because it it's just that little extra wetness. Now if I feel my brush is a little too wet, I'll blot. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to start with, I might leave this guy alone as my basic. So I'm going to go to this one here. So this is my basic one, my step one. This is going to be my step two. So let's pull that aqua with the white and right over that first one there. And you see how it just brightens it up? Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. I'm gonna push those bristles down and then pull up. Oh, my white got a little lost there. So I'm gonna add a tip of white. I'm just going to come back. I'm not putting any more aqua on there, just the white. And I'm just gonna pull that around. And that's pretty, I like that. I'm going to, again, tip into my white. I still have enough aqua on my brush to pull the aqua through. And I'm just going to hit these inner C strokes here. All right, now I've got my teardroppy strokes here. I'm just gonna go over them. And by using the warm white that has the medium already in it. It's nice and fluid so it will flow over the color that's underneath and that's how you get that aqua underneath to come, come through as well as it being on your brush. All right, so now these outer C strokes, I wanna give them a little more pop of white. Oh, not quite as much as I wanted. Let's add some more. There we go. Let's do it again here. Pull it around. I like how that looks. Now let's go up here to this top guy. All right. Push my brush down, pull up. Push those bristles down, pull up. Notice I'm not going that fast. I can paint very fast. I try not to when I'm demonstrating. All right, push that down. See? Look how, how it just starts to pop there. It's really quite pretty. All right, let's see about this bottom guy here. All right. So I think on this one, I want to add more aqua. I just want to make this aqua pop a little bit more. And it does have a little white on there. Let's do it again. There we go. So now a little combination of the aqua and white on my brush. Pull it around. Okay. And really the center is where, on this one, is where I want the white to pop out. So I'm going to pull this C stroke down. And I'm okay with some of the darker aqua underneath popping through. There we go. Hmm. All right. About 
works. I think I like that. I don't know, what do you think? All right, so we'll leave this guy here. Though I will say the sepal, I'm just gonna take some aqua and white. Just gonna do a little C stroke, a little C stroke, and just pull it together like that. All right, so down here, same idea. We're just going to pop more color in using white over the aqua to make it pop. So let's push these bristles down. And again, what I'm doing, I'm going into my aqua first, pulling it in, I'm tipping into my white, let me blot a little bit. And I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna pull it down. Okay, start here, pull around, pull around, and just tipping into it and working my way around it. Okay, here we go. So these, I think I had a little more white in these. White. And you know, every time you do this, it's not going to be exactly the same. We're not robots. We are human beings. We are not made to replicate everything exactly the same. What I paint is not going to be the same as what you paint. And I'm not going to paint the same as you or vice versa. I think I made that make sense, you know, but uh, we're each given God given talents. We're each given strengths and that we develop and work with, you know, and just remember, don't be afraid of this. As as uh, many of you who follow me know, I like to say it's just paint. It really is. It's just paint. This isn't a big deal. This is just fun. This is just give it a try and see. All right. So the mane and the tail. Let's see. So we're going to let this guy dry. Okay. Leave that dry. I'm going to put this over here. And what we can do really quickly, actually, is we'll finish this up, the mane and the tail. Let me come back. Not the mane and the tail, but the uh, back. So here's the back, what I just painted. All right, so I have my detail brush. It's my 10-0, nice and small. I'm going to go into my detail paint. And I see I forgot to put my sepal here, so we'll just paint in the sepal. Okay, and I'm standing up to paint this right now because this guy is tall. He's 12 inches tall. So, now, obviously, it's a little hard to paint with this neck thing here, so we're just going to use the neck to kind of balance myself. And we're just going to add some detail. Now, each time I do this, it's different. I'm just letting the brush kind of guide. I just want to add some highlight to it. So let's add a couple little dots in here. And I have this guy here. Remember, I'm pushing down and pulling up on my brush. Okay. With the same brush, I can get so many different techniques. Use my hand to hold myself steady. I want to thank everybody for your patience as I've been slow in producing videos lately and, and coming out with my classes. You know, life has been interesting. And uh, you'd think, you know, I've mentioned this before, you'd think with all this time at home that you'd get more stuff done or be more productive and it doesn't always work that way. You know, there's been a few bumps in the road, nothing horrible, just bumps. You know, this too shall pass. and work our way through it. All right, let's just keep working my way around. So even with the detail brush, you're still working with C's and S strokes. Okay. So kind of this flower can be like the modified saddle here. I'm going to put some detail here. Maybe we'll put some cross hatching. Just 
seems like it works there. All right, go on this side here. All right. Well, this video is getting a little longer. It took me longer to put these together, but you know, I think it's nice to see the, the process. So let me do this. This guy will eventually go on Etsy, so he will be for sale. Hopefully I get him done very shortly here. Okay, so the back is kind of done. I might add a little few more doodads here and there, but nothing crazy. All right, so now let's back up a little bit. So now I have the tail here. Just want to take my chalk and kind of use my finger as a guide to center my lines here. All right, so that's pretty close. I'm going to go back to my number four brush here. I think all I'm going to do with the aqua and the white, I'm just going to push down. Just bring this nice long tail up. Just really simple. Maybe add some teardrops in here. Right. Just really simple, just a little tail. Typically I'll kind of do the same with the mane. Let's back up a little bit more again. Okay. So same idea. Just kind of use my finger as a guide. Notice these ridges in here. This is typical of a fjord horse as opposed to a dollar horse where it's rounded. Okay, so same idea. Uh, let me go this way. This one I might change up a little bit. Let's start with the teardrop. Pull it up, maybe add a couple dots. And then come back in the opposite direction. Oh, I got a clump on there. Let's get rid of that clump. There we go. Just a little something. And then we'll come back and we'll detail that guy a little bit. All right. So on the face, the face literally just has a little chocolate chip where I push the brush aside and then I wiggle down. All right. So in the last, well, one of the last things, I still have the hooves to do. Then I have the, the nice chest here. I'm going to keep it standing up and down here. Let's just give that a little highlight. Let's start here. So there's a lot of steps to these horses. It's not just a one, two, three thing. You know, and you want to, when you're prepping these also, to spend plenty of time to sand them. So you get down any ridges. Mike, my friend who makes these, does a wonderful job with them. But once you put your first coat of paint on there, it does raise the wood. So you do need to smooth it out and sand it. You know, anywhere that you feel little edges coming up. All right, so that's typical with, with working with any wood. You want to take the time with that. So people forget how much time goes into the prepping of pieces before you even get to them. You know, it's very time consuming. Worth it. It's a great thing to do if you just need to do something, I wouldn't say mindless, but just kind of takes your mind off of things. Now, I'm not making these super fancy, just some nice little teary type things. Add some detail to it. Make sure that's actually in focus here. Maybe do that nice little chocolate chip. Nice little chocolate chip. Let's come around to the other side. Okay. And I like to add these little joiner dots that brings these strokes together. Always bringing them down to the sepal because remember they're fantasy flowers. They are based on real flowers. That all goes down towards the sepal. Okay. 
I'm going to try to do a second video this week, just kind of going over Hollingdahl and Telemark, two of the more popular styles and common styles of rose molly. There are 15 different styles and a few offshoots on top of that. All right, so I'm very bad at doubt about this, but please, if you haven't subscribed before, please hit the subscribe button. And if you've liked this video, please, by all means, hit like. I always thank everybody for joining me. I will never claim to be the foremost authority, but whatever knowledge I have, if I can share it, I'm more than happy to do so. All right, so my bridal is made with my detail brush, and that's literally just the white and aqua put together. And usually what I'll do is down at the hoof area, I will bring and paint in just a general hoof. And I use my finger as a guide and I'll work my way around the horse on that one. So I hope you've enjoyed some time with me today and I really am glad that you uh, were able to join me and look for this pattern to come out shortly and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, remember God is good. Always uh, sending God's blessings to you all and remember it's just paint. Take care.